In Luke 17, Jesus healed 10 lepers, but only one returned to say thank you. Saying thank you is not just a polite courtesy, but a powerful act. Welcome to Pastor's Point, I'm Dr. Jamie Schmitz. Today's message is from Pastor Greg Burdine of Faith Baptist Church in Adrian, Michigan. His message is entitled, The Power of Thank You. Two of the most powerful words in the English language are thank you. They're just really simple words. They're one syllable words. There's not a lot to say. It's just simply thank you. And yet uh, they are extremely powerful. We teach our children when they're young uh, at birthdays and Christmas and even at trick or treat, we teach them to say thank you. It's common courtesy. It's proper etiquette. And as we get older, we should be saying thank you when people do nice things to us. And that's just appropriate. That's just something nice to do. That's what we should be doing. And when people don't do it to us, we get our feelings hurt. When we do something nice for somebody else and they forget or neglect or it's completely out of their mind to say thank you, we say, well, I did all this, I did this for them, and they didn't even say thanks. Why should I do that? But thank you is extremely powerful. In fact, that, that whole attitude of gratitude is extremely important. Cicero, back a long time ago, a philosopher, he said this. He said, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but it is the parent of all virtues. In other words, it, it is the foundational. When, when you have uh, gratitude, when you are able to say thanks, when you have a thankful heart and a thankful attitude, it means so much. Let, let me give you a current illustration. Uh, University of Miami professor Michael McCullough and University of California professor Robert Emmons took three groups of volunteers and, and they wanted them to go through a week and they divided them into three groups and the first group was supposed to look at situations that were messed up, bad things that happened to them that week. The second group looked at things that they were grateful for. They reflected on the good things. The second group, they just monitored the things that happened. So group A, uh, they looked at bad things that happened. I had a flat tire, I was late for work, my, my friend grumbled at me, the customer was bad to me. They looked at the bad things that happened in their week. That, that second group, they looked at things that, that brought them happiness. They looked at my boyfriend was nice to me, we had a wonderful dinner. They looked at all the good things that happened to them that week. And the last group, they just monitored the things that were going on. I got up at such and such a time. I had this appointment. I did this. And as they did that, some things began to, to come up. That, that second group, that second group that centered on being grateful, that looked at the things that happened in their life, it was amazing what happened. Because what they did was they not only monitored what they did, but they began to reflect on what happened that week. What, uh, basically, different things that were going on. How much sleep did you get? Did anybody help you during this week? Uh, did you exercise? All these other uh, events that happened in their life. And this is what ended up happening. Is uh, the, 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 that last group, they be, that focused on gratitude. They were, they were flat out happier than the rest of the group. They saw their lives in favorable terms. They reported fewer negative physical things that were going on in their life, like headaches or colds. They were more active. They spent almost an hour and a half more exercising than the people who focused on their hassles. In addition, those who received uh, the, the end of somebody's you know, good things, it focused on that they were more grateful for what happened. Let, let me give you the, the laundry list of what we're looking at. This group that focused on being grateful, they felt better about their lives as a whole. They were more op 
optimistic, they were more energetic, they were more enthusiastic, they were more determined, they were more interested in what was going on in their life, they were more joyful, they were able to handle their challenges in a greater way, they exercised more, they had fewer illnesses, they got more sleep. In other words, they just lived a better life. And so we find out that when we, when we look at life with a, a thankful heart of, of gratefulness, it, it causes us, this was just one week in some people's life, it leads us into just such a better life. Uh, another study, which is kind of a strange study, that they went to waitresses at restaurants and they simply asked them at the bottom of the bill to the customers to simply put thank you. The waitresses that simply said thank you on their bill received 11% more tip. <laughs> there you go for waitresses. So what we find out is we find out that, that, that being grateful has a, has a lot of power to it, a lot of power behind it. But there's a story in the Bible of an event in Jesus' life where he was on his way to Jerusalem and he was going to die on a cross. He knew that was going to happen. He was going to be betrayed and die on a cross. And there were some men that were sick, 10 lepers, and these lepers stopped him. And this event teaches us some, some really valuable lessons about being thankful. It's in Luke chapter 17, and, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 11. And this is what it says. It says, And it came to pass that as he went to Jerusalem, that's as Jesus went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, and listen to this, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. Jesus healed ten people. And one of them stopped and one of them came back to honor him, to bow at his feet, and to simply say, thank you. And Jesus said something powerful. Not, ten were cleansed. Ten were healed. But only one came back. And Jesus says, that one was made whole. And there's some, there's some lessons here about the whole idea of just expressing thanks not only thanks in general to people that do good things for us, and I think that's an important quality for all of us to have, but to take time to thank Jesus, to thank Jesus. First of all, thank you shifts the focus. You see, when you're, when you're thankful for something, it shifts the focus from the negative things that are going on in your life to the positive things that are going on in your life. It, it shifts your attitude. Because there's plenty in our life that can, we can you know, be negative about, we can complain about, we can gripe about. There's plenty of that. But when you, when you stop and look and say, what can I be thankful for? It causes you to, to shift, a powerful shift, to look and see the positive things that are going on in your life. I don't know what the other nine lepers were thinking or what they were doing, but this caused this man, this attitude that he had, to turn around and shift really the direction of his life, the direction that he was going. He was heading to, to tell the priest what happened, but he turned around and came back to Jesus. And it will begin to shift our attitude when we stop and say thank you. A second thing it does is thank you connects us to a power that we would not have had before. When, when this man decided that he was going to come back and say thank you to Jesus, it, he came back and it connected him to Jesus. That's, that's where the power was. 
Jesus simply spoke a word and these people were cleansed. The power was not in the people. The power was in Jesus. And Jesus was able to do far more than just heal him. In fact, I, I think it made him whole and it connected him to that power. As we begin to display and, and, and not just be thankful, but put it into action and become thankful and say thank you, it changes us and it causes us to become more connected with Jesus Christ. A third thing is it does focus on reality. You know, again, we can, we can be thankful in our hearts, but when we actually do something about it, that's when it changes. Reality. It's all fuzzy up here until we begin to look and, and can't come with pinpointed things that we're thankful for. What are some things that we can be thankful for? We're going to talk about that here in just a few minutes, but there are so many things that we can just look around us and be thankful for. It all has to do with attitude. It changes into reality. This is real. It's not just a fantasy. This is real. These are the things that I'm thankful for. And thank you actually makes you a better person. Jesus didn't say that the rest of them were whole, but this man was whole. This man, I believe, was healed not only physically, but he was also healed spiritually. He came back to Jesus, knelt, glorified, worshipped Jesus, and thanked Jesus, and he was made complete. And it makes us a better person. We know that being thankful and being grateful and saying thank you, even in, 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 our, in our world, our business world and our family world, is a, is a great thing to do. But to be thankful to Jesus and what he has done is so important. And, and those are the lessons that we, we have in this. But there's some actual spiritual thoughts. I want you to think about this. Uh, this, this, this story, this actual event that happened in the life of Jesus, it's, it has some, some s spiritual applications that we can make. These, these men were lepers. They had a dreaded sickness that was going to take their life. And this sickness that they had caused them to become separated, separated from others. They, they were quarantined. They were separated from God. They could no longer worship God in the temple. And it began to destroy their life. And leprosy all through the Bible is, is a real life illustration of what sin does in the life of individual people. It starts off small and it begins to permeate through our life. And it's deadly, and there is no cure. And it begins to permeate through that. And here's the, here's the lesson that, that I think that we can learn from, from this story of these men, that all these men that were healed. And that is that we have a deadly problem that only Jesus can fix, and that is sin. Uh, we, we try to fix it, we try to cover it up, we try to make over it so that we don't, you know, look bad, but... The Bible says that sin is a problem for all of us, for all have sinned, and we've fallen short of the glory of God. We've fallen short of what God wants us to be. And Jesus is the only one who can deliver us from that sin. Not only is it deliver us, Jesus delivers us from that sin, but you, we need to reach out to Jesus and cry for help. I love what this says. This, this tells us that these men, when they saw Jesus, they cried out for help. Jesus had the power to change them, but they, they had to make that step. They had to cry out to Jesus and say, say help me. Jesus actually tells the story of, of a religious leader and a, a sinner. And the religious leader was talking about how good he was. And the sinner says, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus says that man went, went back to his house justified to cry out to Jesus. We must cry out to Jesus when we know our spiritual condition and the sin that's, that's in our life. But here's the interest, most interesting part about this story. Is this story, God's power was not released until these men stepped out in faith. I don't know if you noticed that, but they cried out for Jesus to have mercy. And Jesus said, I want you to go show yourselves to the priests. Because actually when you were cleansed from leprosy in the Old Testament, it said that once you're cleansed, you have to go to the priest so he could check you out to make sure that you were cleansed. And it says that as they were going, they were healed. 
They, they, they had to take that step of faith. They had to step out. The power of God is, is powerful, but it is, it is held up until we take that initial step of faith. Until we, until, until we walk out and see what God can do. And that's what these men did. They stepped out in faith. And as they stepped out, the power of God came down. And sometimes we need to do that. Not only in our salvation and trusting Jesus Christ as our Savior, we won't get all of our answers. Uh, we will need to step out in faith, but also in our Christian life as we begin to walk with Jesus. We won't have all of our, our questions answered, but we need to step out in faith and begin to walk and see. We got another thing we learn here is it's good to spend time with Jesus. He was healed and he could have said, that's good enough. That's really what I wanted. But he knew he needed more. He needed to do something more. And so he came back and he knelt and hung out with Jesus. He knelt down at the feet of Jesus. And it is good to spend time with Jesus. Because that initial healing was not enough. He needed more. And it's good for us to spend time with Jesus, to learn from him, to allow him to begin to change our life. Another lesson is feeling thankful is not the same as giving thanks. I, I mentioned the fact that we can be really grateful and never say thank you. We can have that feeling, that attitude. How many times have we suppressed what we know we should say? We've suppressed the I love you's. We've suppressed the thank you's. And we haven't verbalized it. We haven't shown it. And this man, I, I'm sure the other guy, nine guys were grateful. I'm sure they were thankful. I'm sure they were excited. I'm sure as soon as they, they saw the priest, they were talking about how great this was and how wonderful Jesus was. But this was the one man that came back to actually say thanks. And it is important for us to take some time to say thank you. Not just to be grateful, but to give thanks. And here's a good one. Jesus always finishes what he starts. He finishes what he starts. And when this man came back to spend time with Jesus, Jesus made him whole. And I think it's a sad commentary that Jesus, Jesus says, I, I healed 10, but only one came back. I, I don't know if it's typical that when Jesus does something in people's lives, that very few people actually come back and live a life of thankfulness to actually say thank you. I know a lot of times um, in our church, we have a big long list of prayer requests and we have people call in and they'll say, hey, can you put us on your prayer list? And, and I see a lot of times on Facebook and all the other social medias, people putting out prayer requests and, and I want God to do this and I want God to do that. But I see in comparison very few times that when God answers those prayer, when, when God comes through, when they get out of the hospital, when they survive, very few people post back up, I just want to thank God for what I've done. But, but that's important for us to do because it, make, it, it takes a full circuit. It makes us whole. So what are some things that we can be thankful for? There's a passage in the Old Testament, Psalm 103, and it tells us some of the things that we can be thankful for. Let me read it to you. It's a beautiful passage. You, I'm sure you've heard parts of this. They put it into song so many times. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. David wrote this psalm. And David talks here, we don't want to forget his benefits. We, we, we don't want our life to go on without stopping and just blessing God and thanking God for his goodness. But he, he marks out here three things. 
First of all, he says we need to thank God for his forgiveness. The sins. Jesus forgives sin at a great price when Jesus died on the cross. At a great price. But he is willing to forgive us for anything that we have done. He goes on and later on in this passage in Psalm 103. Listen to what he says. Verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west. That, that's, that's, he's removed it. And so just to stop and say, God, thank you for forgiving me of my sin. My past sins, the sins I'm going to do today, the sins I'm going to do in the future, the, the things that I've done that I don't even know they're wrong yet. Thank you for your total forgiveness of what I have done. A second thing he thanks God, he says, for redemption. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. God had redeemed the nation of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt. Uh, the, the Passover lamb that was sacrificed. He redeemed them. He bought them. And Jesus has bought us with his precious blood. We can thank God for what he has done for us. There's a cute little story, and I love the story. A little boy that had built this boat out of some little cardboard and some little wood, and he built this boat. And it was just a beautiful little boat. And he took it to the lake, and he put it out, and it was sailing. It was going really good. And all of a sudden, the wind caught it and went to the other side of the lake. He went around to try to find it, and he couldn't find it. And so a few days later, he was walking around, and he saw in the hobby store, he saw that boat that he had put together and spent so much time. And he went in, and he said, Mr., he said, that's my boat. He said, I'd like to, I'd like to get that boat back. And the man says, well, you, I'm sorry, but I don't have any proof. He said, you're going to have to buy it just like everybody else. And he said, I don't have the money. And he said, well, you come back with the money and you can buy the boat. And so the little boy, you know, did all the things that little boys do, lemonade stands and, you know, uh, pop cans and whatever he could do to raise the money, to get the money. And so he came in when it was all there. He said, mister, I'd like to buy the boat. He said, okay, hand me the money. He got the boat. And as he was walking out, he looked at that boat and he says, you belong to me twice. First, because I made you. And second, because I bought you. We belong to Jesus. First, because he made us. And second, because he bought us. We belong to him. That third area I think that we sometimes forget is to thank God for is his satisfaction. The the peace and contentment that God gives his followers in our life. I love what he says. He says, verse 5, who satisfies thy mouth with good things. It is so good to be a follower of Jesus. In the midst of the craziness of our world, there is a peace that passes all understanding that, w that we forget what it was like to not have Jesus as our foundation. He goes on and he talks about this. He says the, the, uh, in verse uh, 15, for, uh, for man his days are like grass as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth, and then the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. Life comes and it goes, and when we're gone, we're gone. But he says, for a follower of Jesus, we have the peace and contentment that God is going to take care of us. We can thank him for the satisfaction and the peace and the contentment that he gives us. So much to be thankful for. So much that we can thank God for. I've heard somebody say this, and I think it's a beautiful thought, is the hardest arithmetic to learn is to count your blessings. <laughs> to count your blessings. Remember the old, there's an old hymn. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. God has done so much for us. We need to, I don't, I don't want to be like the nine guys that gets the blessing of God 
And God, all the good things and the wonderful things and the healings and, and, and the satisfaction and redemption and the forgiveness and all those things. And I just go my merry way and live my life, live my day without stopping and thanking him. I want to be the one that comes back to Jesus and just to say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Take a few moments today, maybe you're weak, and just be thankful. Start a thank you journal. So, uh, write down the things that you're thankful for. Walk through your life and just realize how good God has been to you and be grateful and thankful. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Pastor's Point. I trust this message has been a blessing to you and hope you consider connecting with this local church. To learn more about Pastor's Point, visit wlmb.com forward slash Pastor's Point, where you can send us feedback, watch episodes on YouTube, and find a schedule of pastors for this season's episodes. Pastors Point is a local, viewer-supported ministry that couldn't exist without the generous support of viewers like you. If this message has impacted you, please consider making a financial gift today and make sure to send us a note about how Pastors Point has made a difference in your life. Thank you for supporting us and helping us bring a variety of life-giving messages right into people's homes through the ministry of Pastors Point.